On April 26, 1986, the worst ever nuclear disaster took place at the Chernobyl power plant near the city of Pripyat, situated in the northern part of Ukraine, which was then part of the Soviet Union. The disaster was classified as a level 7 event on the international nuclear event scale, and as you can see from the image, it is the absolute maximum classification one can give for a nuclear disaster, which gives you an idea how bad it was. The only other disaster with the same classification was the more recent Fukushima meltdown in Japan. But in this video, we are just going to discuss about Chernobyl. So, what actually happened in Chernobyl and why is it considered the worst nuclear accident of all time? And what even happens in a nuclear fallout? If you have any of these questions in your mind, then just keep watching this video. At 1:23 a.m. on that fateful day, engineers were performing a routine safety test in the reactor number no. four of the Chernobyl power plant. The reactors used in the plant were Soviet-designed RBMK 1000. RBMK stands for this in Russian, which roughly translates to high power channel type reactor. However, the design of RBMK 1000 reactor is now universally considered faulty because it used graphite to moderate the reactivity of the nuclear core. Unlike other reactors which used water as a moderator, because of this, a continuous reaction used to take place in the core. Now, this flawed design, along with some serious human errors, resulted in sudden increase in power, which led to a series of explosions in the reactor. The explosions blew the roof of the plant and released radioactive isotopes in the atmosphere, and this is where the situation gets really, really serious. The main risk with any nuclear plant is the danger of radiation. Even if you know a little bit about radiation, you will know that despite being invisible, radiation is extremely harmful. And here in Chernobyl, after the explosions, all the harmful radioactive isotopes like iodine-131, cesium-137, and strontium-90 were released into the air. The radiation released here was 400 times more radioactive than the atomic bombings of Hiroshima. Now this insane amount of radiation was drifting over large parts of Europe because of winds and pressure conditions with the worst affected areas being Ukraine, Western Russia and especially Belarus where 60% of the fallout landed. The authorities were slow in admitting the scale of the disaster to the outside world and only revealed it completely when radiation alarms began to go off in Sweden which was over 1000 km away from Chernobyl. Back at the explosion site, two workers died at the night of the accident, while 29 others died later due to the effects of radiation. The Pripyat fighters were able to put out the fires in few hours and hence prevented explosions in other three reactors of the plant. Otherwise, the disaster could have been even worse. The 30-kilometer area surrounding the plant was closed off and was called as the exclusion zone. Even days after the explosion, radioactive material was still burning inside the plant, and it required a cleanup. But who would come forward and take the risk of cleaning such harmful materials and ultimately expose themselves to deadly radiation? Well, about 200,000 people from all over the Soviet Union came forward for the cleanup and were called as liquidators. The liquidators are credited for reducing the effects of the fallout, and with their bravery, they probably saved thousands of lives. Some liquidators received lethal dosages of radiation as they worked without proper protection. About 29 of them died shortly and had such high level of radioactivity in their bodies that some of them had to be buried in lead coffins. By December 1986, a large sarcophagus was constructed to seal off the reactor and to prevent any further radiation leaking from the site, as the site still had highly radioactive substances below it. The most dangerous of these substances was the elephant's foot. Elephant's foot, because it resembles an elephant's foot, was the radioactive debris found in the basement of Unit Four. It is said to be the most toxic substance on Earth. The elephant's foot is so highly radioactive that only spending two minutes near it will cause cell hemorrhage and cancers everywhere on your body. Five minutes of standing next to it, and you will die soon. This toxic substance is still melting in the basement of the power plant. The city of Pripyat, which had 50,000 people at that time, wasn't even told of the accident until 36 hours later, when they were finally evacuated. Just few hours after the explosion, 
people reported severe headaches and vomitings. Some people described their experience as a strong metallic taste in the mouth and a sensation of pins and needles all over the face. All these were symptoms of acute radiation syndrome. Since the beginning of this video, I have said the word radiation 14 times and you might be wondering how much radiation is too much because we receive radiation every day in minute quantities from cosmic rays and background radiation. You are also exposed to a considerable amount of radiation during x-rays and CT scans. But the radiation dosages we receive in these activities is in hazardous. So how much of it is lethal and what were the exact levels of radiation in Chernobyl? Well, the short answer is astronomically high. Radiation is measured in seawards and the device used for measuring it is called Geiger meter which makes a sound like this. A human being if exposed to a radiation of two seawards all at once will certainly die shortly after. And dying from radiation poisoning is possibly one of the worst ways to go. Like some of the pictures of radiation poisoning victims are so disturbing that you won't have your food after seeing them. The radiation levels in the control room of the Chernobyl plant were a staggering 300 seawards per hour at the time of explosions. And like I said, just 2 seawards per hour is more than enough to be deadly. So you can guess what 300 seawards can do. Even 30 years after the explosion today, the level is still 34 seawards per hour which can kill you within 15 minutes after exposure. It is estimated that Pripyat would not be safe for human life again for another 20,000 years because of such high levels of radioactivity. And this is why Pripyat is still a ghost town, a place frozen in time. Everyone left their belongings behind thinking that they would come back soon. Buildings are abandoned, toys are rotting, the amusement park lies deserted and everything is at the same place where it was left. You can visit this place for $380 and believe me it's safe as the amount of time you will spend there won't cause any problems and you actually won't be getting anywhere near the reactor. But if you can't afford to go to Ukraine, just the pictures and some exploring on Google Earth will give you a good idea of how spine chilling this place actually is. So is it heavy? Coming to the question of fatalities, nobody really knows how many people died in this disaster. There are estimated to be thousands of deaths related to long-term effects like cancer. UN believes that Chernobyl is responsible for 4,000 deaths while Greenpeace puts the estimates at a much higher 93,000 deaths. Since Chernobyl, fortunately there has been no nuclear meltdown of the same magnitude. However, the future remains uncertain. With over 450 nuclear reactors still operating in 30 countries around the world, experts say that the chances of another Chernobyl before 2050 are as high as 50%. All we can hope now is that Chernobyl will remain the worst nuclear disaster to ever happen. So this was the story of Chernobyl, a safety test gone terribly wrong.